Good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming out this morning to see me. I'm Tracy Trevethan. Um, I've been around forever. Kim, Kim Andrews, sitting right here in the front row. Everybody knows Kim, right? Yeah. No? Okay, wait. Kim, I always have a question. Did you ever finish that jacket, that class you took from me in the 90s? <laughs> I brought it to the July um, auction at our Shasta Guild where we auction off stuff. The finished some, jacket? No, no, no. <laughs> and somebody took it? Excellent. Oh, excellent. That's great. Okay, I have two door prizes to donate first. So, oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And I have a, a pattern, a free pattern for everybody today. So we'll just start with whoever wants to pass these out. I know. They, it's a, it's a pin cushion, and um, the pattern is for the tiny little pumpkin pin cushion. So even though I do it out of wool. I mean, this is okay. This is your typical pumpkin color, right? But they're pretty cute in every color. I only brought a couple to show you, but you could even do it with cotton, whatever. It's just kind of a fun little thing. Also, um, is there a recipe on that one? Oh, no, shoot. I'm sorry. My coaster, I know, it's my coaster patterns, and I don't think I brought any of those with me, but they're all on my website. All of my coaster patterns come with a recipe <coughs> that is related to what the coaster is. Oh, it's not a cocktail. It is coaster. a cocktail. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I didn't, I'm sorry. Now you have to go shopping on my website. All right. So everybody take one of those. If you have, I brought a bunch of them. So if you have somebody that you think would like one, you can take two. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Everybody has well, at least one friend, right? <laughs> okay. I, I live in Jordan now. We moved to Jordan nine years ago. Seems like forever. I lived in Chaska before that. So um, I, if you were listening on Thursday night, I did make some reference to the Chaska quilt group. And I'm just too lazy to go there anymore. I know. Isn't that terrible? It's across the river. <laughs> and you go? Um, okay, well. Um, I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where to start. I'm going to do a demo. So I'm going to do a little demo to show you how you can dye wool at home. Okay, it's... It's not the, the way I do it because I do big pieces, but I guess I'll just kind of start where I left off the other night. I, I started quilting, um, I don't know, what was 1991 or 1992, and I had been sewing for a long, long time. So um, quilting, I don't know, I don't even know how to explain how I feel about it, right? All of us. It's, it's just fun, it's relaxing, it's creative, and um, every time I try, try to quit, I get sucked back in. So I just keep going. Uh, I, I started, I learned how to dye fabric in college. I had a job in the costume department, in the, in the costume shop, in the theater department. And we had to re- what do we call it now? We call it recycle, right? We had an upcycle, I guess. <laughs> we were always taking, because the budget wasn't huge and you know we had to make new costumes for every production. And so we're taking old costumes and redoing them. <sighs> so everybody loves that part, right? Rip, rip this apart. And anyway, we had to dye our own fabrics, especially if it was something we needed to recycle. Uh, so I learned how to dye fabric way back then. And then when I was working at the sampler and painted fabric came out into the industry, I thought, oh, I can do that. So I started again, I started dyeing cottons and rayons and painting fabrics for quilting. Um, 
I have a few pieces here that I brought that have some in there. And then I transitioned into dyeing wool. So I have been dyeing wool since I think 2004, 2005. So that, that's been a long time. <clears throat> and I have now 150 colors that I dye. It's a lot, I know, it's crazy. And um, every time my mother, who helps me a lot vending, She'll say, is this a new color? Yeah, that's new. Why do you need more? Why do you need another new color? But I have a, quite a few designers that um, do patterns, books, whatever, in wool applique uh, that don't dye wool, that I dye custom colors for them. And I thought, well, I'm just gonna add it to, you know, I came up with that color, I'm gonna add it in. So that's how I ended up with 150. And it's a lot, but you know, it's like needing that big box of crayons. <laughs> what good is the 24 box? <laughs> it's no good. So yeah, that's where I ended up with um, doing a lot of work. <laughs> Just giving myself more work, but um, I do enjoy it a lot. So I also talked the other night about um, learning how to applique on cotton and uh, how much I disliked that. And if you like it, more power to you, but it wasn't my cup of tea. And when I discovered wool applique, that I didn't have to do anything to the edges. You don't have to starch them or turn them under or even iron them. You know, it's, um, that opened a whole new world. And if you haven't tried it yet, man, I, I, there's nothing better, I don't think. So I, I think that I'm just going to talk about some techniques and do some show and tell while I'm talking about the techniques. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. And then we'll morph into a demo. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I have, I'm going to pass this along too, um, because it's just so hard to hold little things up and show them. I'm just going to pass stuff and you can look at it close up. Uh, these are ornaments. So I have a couple of patterns that are ornaments, and it, so you can see them up close. Those are the ornaments. I should thank you. I should have another um, little bin for the other stuff, but yeah, because that was smart to bring one bin. <laughs> I, I have one here. Bin. I'm just going to empty this one. No, I'll, I'll just take another bit. I know where we. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so then we can we can just kind of do this other little stuff. <laughs> oh, and here I have a coaster, but that one doesn't have a recipe. <laughs> huh? <laughs> what kind of recipe would a sunflower have? What to do with something. <laughs> something. And these all fit in there? Yeah. Because, you know, when they come around, um, just paw through it and <laughs> look at everything. Oh, hey, wait, 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 wait. Here, let's put these in there. I mean, why not? Right? You guys can just dig through it. Yeah, isn't this cute? My little fox zipper bag. And I have a little owl zipper bag. Okay, where was I? Kim, you're in charge of keeping me on track. Kim, because I've known you long, longer. I've known you so long that you know me pretty well. You. I've known you since the Sam Oh no, you took that coat class. That was an Excelsior. Really? Oh, okay. Well, it was a long time ago. Still, that's a long time. That's that's the nineties. Yeah. That's <laughs> um, all right. Well, I'm just going to do a little. I, I could use some holders. Okay. We'll just do one at a time. And then it doesn't. Here's the top. It doesn't really matter. Stand on your head if you have to. <laughs> this, this little quilt um, is called Nancy's Garden. And it is just, it's, it's one of my first ones a long time ago. And it is just buttonhole stitch. 
buttonhole blanket stitch. They're not exactly the same thing. Okay, I know this because I did tailoring in college. <laughs> uh, they are just done kind of the, in the opposite direction, but it is basically the same stitch. But I guess in quilting, we're doing blanket stitch, um, which is just a, it's one way to stitch down your wool applique, okay? And it is not the only way. You can, you can do it, um, do it lots of other ways. All right, so this, that one, yeah, get, get in there close so everybody can see close. That one, I'm pretty sure I did by hand. Kim, did I do that one by hand stitch? Yes. Okay. This one, <laughs> this one is um, Oak Leaf Limbo. And this one I did, I showed this the other night too. This one I did um, blanket stitch on the sewing machine. Okay, so it doesn't have to be hand work if you don't want to do hand work. Yes. This one is, um, what's that called? Stripper on the block. And this, this Tracy? Yeah. yeah. I just want to give a direction to the people who are showing it. They can pick it up and come over to the owl camera first. Is that close enough to the owl? Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot about the camera. <laughs> yeah, and Tracy? Oh, well. Here, just put it right here. Just put it face up. Um, okay, so then this next with the orangey one that is the same pattern as the pink and black runner stripper on the block. But oh, okay, so the pink one, I did that one when that comes by. That is stitched on the sewing machine also, but I just did free motion straight stitch like quilting um, because I. That other one to do blanket stitch on the machine took forever because you have to stop and turn and stop and turn. And I thought, this is ridiculous. I don't have time for that. So I just did it straight stitch. And But the orange and yellow and purple one, that one also, get a good close up of that one. And maybe we, sh when she's done walking around, we could pass that around because that one is hand stitched and there's a lot of fun embellishments, embroidery embellishments. Yeah. Can we assume that all of your applique is wool? Because it's hard to tell from a distance what's cotton and what's wool. The, yes, my applique today, everything I brought is wool. And um, the backgrounds of everything so far are cotton. And when I have, when we show one that is total wool, I'll tell you. Okay. okay? Yeah. Do you, when you're using cotton background, do you quilt the whole thing first and then put on the wool, or do you put the wool on just the top and then quilt the whole thing? I I finish it completely and then quilt it. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little break and talk about a method, so you can sit. You whatever. So that's a good time to talk about this uh, since you brought it up, because my brain gets pretty random, and it's good that you ask questions. Um, okay, so my preferred method is, what do I do with my stuff? I like to um, stitch down my wool without any fusible product, okay? And I like to do that because, here, let's just, let's just pass this one because then it doesn't get flat, okay? It stays more 3D, more poofy. When you do something that's been fused down, and this one, this one is fused down, okay? But the, it's, the pieces are tiny, okay? So if you're gonna do something with all these tiny pieces, it's, it makes it a lot easier to fuse it down. Um, but that's not my favorite because it, it's flatter. The wool, you know, gets pressed down and it's fused down to the background and it just doesn't look the same. And I prefer to have that little poof of my wool. Does that make sense? So this is, I'm gonna pass this so you can see. What I like to do, this is just, this one is just freezer paper. Thank you, Kim. And this one, and it's on the back. 
I'll just pass this one. You can, there's a piece of paper taped to it so you can look at the back, but the paper tells you what the fusible is. And it is heat and bond feather light. Okay, and I have tried all of them. And that is the best one because it is very light and it, um, it won't, doesn't gum up your needle. And if you're hand stitching, it's not too much to stitch through. It's, it's really barely noticeable when you're hand stitching through it. But still, it's fused down, so it's going to be flatter. And the wool, when it gets ironed, loses some of that loft. And it just never recovers back to normal because I think of that glue backing. So unless I've got tiny little pieces, I'm not going to do that. I use a freezer paper. And you can just use kitchen freezer paper. Like I, not everybody probably has freezer paper in their kitchen, but um, you can just buy it on the roll or you can buy it in a package that's eight and a half by 11 sheets that goes to the printer. Okay, so if, you, if you've got a pattern and you can scan it and then you can print like that one sheet going around on the heat and bond that was printed in in the printer, but it's that heat and the freezer paper will go right through my printer without anything else. I even if it's not the sheets, I can take the regular kitchen freezer paper and cut it to eight and a half by eleven, and and feed it through the printer. But that heat and bond light. It is not like the printer. So I have to tape it to a piece of paper. That's why it's taped to that piece of paper. And then it will feed through. But otherwise, it does this. <laughs> and it's just, it's even worse. I mean, you know, it just gets all crinkled up and the, the, um, the ink smears and, and it's, it's a hot mess. So just tape it to a piece of paper. Yeah, and then and then it works just fine. Um, so I did. I have a couple. I have a couple packages of that um, heat and bond light. If anybody wants to buy some, it costs a lot more money than freezer paper. But um, eight forty nine for ten sheets. Yeah, freezer paper is more like. Well, this is $3.99 for 10 sheets. So I, I have one of those too. I also have a package of freezer paper sheets. Um, there's 30 in here for $10.99. But that's all I had on hand was those. But first come, first serve. No, don't rush up here now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, does anybody have a question about these methods before I go any further? I thought I heard somebody ask something about what thread you used. Um, on that, when can you hold that up? On that one. On that one? Oh, holy cow. Um, I know it was a variegated thread. And thinking about what year that was, it was probably a sulky rayon. Does it look like a rayon thread? I'm not sure. Well, some of it is rayon. Yeah, that's a rayon thread. That's a variegated uh, rayon thread. But um, Superior, I don't even think they were around then, um, but they make a really nice variegated thread, and I think that might be more readily available. So I don't, uh, or there's cotton variegated, whatever. Yeah, but I th I'm pretty sure that was a rayon because it's a little shiny, and that's it's just kind of fun to add another texture. Something shiny is always good, right? A little bit shiny. Um, so uh, just on back up quick, back to the freezer paper. Does anybody not, not know how that works? Okay. One Zoom or just ask me, how does she use the freezer paper? So okay, perfect. <laughs> so the freezer paper has a matte side and it has a shiny side, whether it's in the roll from the kitchen or the sheets for your printer. And the shiny side, like magic, and I don't know who figured it out, will stick to fabric if you iron it on. So I take that freezer paper and on the matte side, you can trace your pattern or your shape, whatever. If you wanna make something um, 
whatever, an applique shape or an ornament, and you have a cookie cutter that's the right size, that works good. So what, however you're going to get your pattern onto that paper, just trace it onto the matte side. And then that shiny side irons down to your fabric and sticks there so you can cut it out. So you cut out your freezer paper pattern, not on the line, trace it onto the freezer paper, cut out outside the line. Give yourself at least a quarter inch, half inch, whatever is comfortable for you. Iron it down. And then you can cut out on the line and it stabilizes the wool. I mean, wool is not, you know, it's not like cotton. It kind of wants to move around when you're cutting it and it gets a little slippery. So that freezer paper on there makes it easier to cut. Also, you can use just about any scissor then. Doesn't have to be your expensive fabric scissors. Don't use those because you're cutting through paper. So just that, use. That goes on the wrong side of the wall. Because you know, it, whichever side you want. <laughs> because really, I mean, you can't always tell the right side or the wrong side of the wall. No, I mean, it doesn't wash off and you don't peel it off. It, you do it, it comes right off. Oh. So the freezer paper, after we iron it down and then you cut it out on the line. And if you've got something that's got a lot of little pieces like this and it's got to all fit together like a puzzle, and you're trying to contain it into the size of a block, you should really cut out that piece on the inside of the line you've drawn. <coughs> Even if you printed the pattern onto paper, cut out inside the line, because if you've traced your pattern and you've drawn that line, you just made it <coughs> five microns bigger, okay? And then when you cut it out outside the line, you've made it bigger again. So cut it out and cut off the line, okay? Then you can rip off the freezer paper. And did I bring one that I could just show you? No, use your imagination. <laughs> you can just take it off. It doesn't leave any residue behind. You can also reuse it. It'll iron again three or four times, okay? Depending on your wool, some wool has more little fibers on it because fibers do stick to it. And then when it gets all covered, it won't stick anymore. Like those uh, things, lint brush. You know how once it's all covered, it doesn't stick? Same kind of effect. Um, so then there's nothing on the back of your wool and you're, you've, it makes it easier to cut out the piece, but you've got something that's still soft and pliable not it doesn't get stiff and later if you you're welcome to touch that quilt um, and so you can feel what it what it feels like okay because it, it is different all right any other questions about freezer paper or that before we go on oh we got everything all right um Oh, here's another one that I did um, on the sewing machine. And I don't know, is it better? Do you guys think if we, would you rather have it passed so you can see it close? Because I don't mind. And then Kim doesn't, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, just the owl. Yeah, the owl. The owl. Oh, <laughs> the owl. oh, I didn't even notice that. So we have people on Zoom watching. Yeah, yeah. I forget. Yeah. Hi, people. <laughs> <laughs> So this one, um, go ahead and pass it around after the owl and everybody else saw it. This one I also did on the sewing machine, free motion. Now I, I am an accomplished uh, free motion quilter. So um, of course that's not, I mean, I, I'm not really that good at it. But <laughs> I, I tell myself I am so that I have the confidence to do that. And look closely because it's not perfect. Um, if you haven't figured out already, I'm a little impatient. And so for me to take the time to do it Susan Cleveland style, <laughs> we, are, we are friends and we are so opposite. <laughs> but anyway, um, you guys know how precise she is. God bless her. <laughs> but um, it's not perfect, but it's stuck down. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's, that's the whole key, right? 
We can, this one, I wanna talk about thread now, because somebody asked. Okay, so this next one that's gonna come around after we show it to the owl. Um, can I, let me see, though, no, that's the, that's Good Morning Glory. That's the name of this. The more, this one is all wool. Okay, so it's a small piece. Um, the background is only took a fat eighth. And so that's, that's more doable uh, to my pocketbook. Okay, because wool is, is expensive. And uh, it seems like every year the sheep charge more. <laughs> it, just, it just keeps going up. So that one, and, and we can pass this one too. This one is um, chick, chick, chickadee. Uh, I get all my wool. Oh, that's a Mary Deanie. Mary did that for me. Yeah, my friend Mary, she quilted this for me because this is hand quilted and I do not do that. Um, but she sometimes, yeah, she sometimes finishes things for me. I forgot that was on there. She did a embroidery embellishment along the binding. So when it comes, take a good look at this. But the thread, if I'm doing hand work, hand, doing the hand applique, which I do most of the time now, those ones that I did by machine was when I was in high speed production to get stuff made for my booth for vending in a show. You know, you gotta fill the walls. Um, so now I always use wool thread. And I, I wish I could remember what year it was. I don't know how long ago it's been. Um, I don't even, oh. I think I was using Orofil made a, I don't know if they still do, made a, a wool and acrylic blend thread that I thought was nice until I got this. Um, so I was at Quilt Market one year and Mary, Deanie, I don't know, you guys might know, she used to work at, at she worked at the sampler with me. She worked at Make It So. Um, she is an award-winning hand quilter. She won a big ribbon at Houston. Yeah, she's really good. And when she says, do you have anything you want me to finish for you? <laughs> yeah, and I just pay her in wool. It works out pretty good. But anyway, she was helping me at Quilt Market and she comes back to the booth and she's like, Baldani has wool thread. Huh. Yeah, so they only sold it in white. That was their first time showing it. So I went and looked at it and I bought all they had in the booth. <laughs> I did dye it. Because I well, the first day I bought one skein because I needed to see if it was any good. Yeah, and dye it and see what it came out like. So um, yeah, so I took it home that night and dyed some. The next day I bought all they had with them. And um, I have bought a heck of a lot since. So I, I do, oh, we'll pass this. This is, this, you can see all the colors. This is the package of my, my full line. And I, I don't know, I dyed like 25 different colorways. Yes, Brenda? What is the that manufacturer's name? V-A-L-D-A-N-I. And you can buy, now you can buy it in white from them, you know, on their website. They're in Canada, but I think the thread is made in Romania, but they distribute out of Canada. Um, they also sell it in colors now, but their colors are all solid colors. I do variegated. So when I, I had to decide what colors I was going to do, Right? I mean, I can't, I, I don't have time. I can't dye 150 colors of thread. I can't do that. It's labor intensive. You know, I mean, I have to hand dye them and hand wash it and it takes a lot of time. Um, so I, big idea. I thought, well, I'm going to dye a thread to match every one of my bundles. So I make these six pack bundles and each six pack bundle has six colors in it. Like this one is six different purples, six different turquoises, 
<laughs> you know, there's one yellow, six different yellows. So I dye a thread, like here, here's the yellow, um, but I, not six, three. Each one has three colors in the thread. So I have to dip this thread into three colors of dye. So it is work. It's kind of fun though. It's not terrible work. And my wonderful husband, wherever he went in the other room taking a nap, he, one day he was watching football and um, yeah, the, okay, so the, the thread comes like this. I can't even get it bigger. I wish I could, but it comes like this in a 10 yards, 10 yards. And if you buy it from them, that's what you get like this, 10 yards. So um, I, I kind of undo it. Show you. It's like if you knit and you buy, you know, yarn for knitting, it's in a, in a hook, right? Yeah, it's in a loop like this. So I undo my little loop and I dip, dip and dip. Anyway, so then I hand wash and I dry and I've got this loop of thread. So then I give it to Neil. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, honey, you're, while you're watching football, do you think you could uh, wind these into balls for me? Because then I have to measure it out. Because this is, this is um, what is it, 10 yards? And um, it's not 10 yards. This is 100 yards. No. Does it say I'm a little 50? I don't know what it is. I make. That's the bigger size. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so whatever is on there, I um, I put twenty yards on each card. Hundred and ten. There's a hundred and ten yards in my skein. <laughs> and okay, so he we have one of those yarn winder things, right? And he just does it while he's watching TV. <laughs> So then I, I get it in a ball and we have to, I have to wind it onto cards by hand again. So there's, there's a lot of labor that goes into the thread. And if it wasn't the best thread for wool applique, I wouldn't do that. It, it, is, it is lovely. It uh, goes around a curve so nicely. Uh, the wool is so much more flexible than cotton. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you are doing applique with cotton thread, it doesn't always want to go around a bend because the cotton is twisted one way and maybe you're make, wanting it to go uh, against its twist and it does not play nice. But the wool just snugs itself right up on a, on a curve and it's, it's just lovely. It will blend in if you want it to blend in. Um, I, I really like using it. So I use that for the applique to stitch down the pieces. But then if I want to embellish it, like did everybody get to see the orange and yellow one? Did that go around? Okay, so then if I'm going to embellish with embroidery, I like to use cotton. Because now I've, it's got a little shine. The wool thread is... Here, this, pass that around, then you can feel it better. Uh, the wool thread is softer, but it's not shiny, right? It's just, it's like the wool. And so it's got that matte finish and it kind of blends in. So it's not as noticeable. So your stitching again, doesn't have to be as good. So then I can stitch faster. But, you know, it's, it's not cheap either. Okay, I'm gonna tell you, although I sell it cheaper than Baldoni, so I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Their colored thread costs more than mine. I should probably charge more, but <laughs> um, but if you you know if you if you don't want to buy it, you don't want to spend the money on that, you can do your wool applique with anything. You can do it with embroidery floss if you've got a bunch at home. You can do it with, with whatever you want, right? Try one though and see what you think. This, um, oh, these are, this is my fish, kind of fishy. <laughs> my husband likes to fish. Um, what can I say about this? This has a little bit of embellishment. I mean, everything, this is wool on batik. There's a little bit of embroidery. 
Not not a ton. And, you know. You can. I don't care. You want to pass it around? You can walk around with it. It's kind of big. <laughs> Um, oh, we'll show this one next, Kim. This this is a um, three bad sheep. <laughs> I have a I have a funny story about that, but I don't have enough time to tell it. <laughs> okay, I'll tell it quick. We were um, we were at Stonehenge in England. And they have this path. You can't go off the path, right? Because they don't want you to walk in towards the Stonehenge. So I've been walking along the path. And it's out in the middle of the country. And there's this field right next to us full of sheep. I love sheep. <laughs> so, and the poppies. I mean, the field is full of poppies blooming and these sheep. And they're right up by the fence. So I go off the path. But not towards the stones. I mean, what do they care if I go see the sheep, right? <laughs> so I go over there, I'm taking pictures of the sheep and the poppies, and it was so beautiful. And then off in the distance, somebody's yelling at somebody. <laughs> I didn't really pay attention because I can't be yelling at me. What? I'm not doing anything wrong. Ma'am, ma'am, get back on the path. <laughs> and I, I look around, I'm like, oh, he's yelling at me. And my husband is walking the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay. So I had to I had to put them in um, in wool. So did the sheep go? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to talk about that before they get too far. They might have to go around again. Um, if you noticed my center sheep. The stitch, the stitch I did on that. So that I think we should pass it around again. So now you can, if you didn't touch it or really pay attention to it. Um, so I was gonna completely cover that sheep with the drizzle. That's the drizzle stitch, is what it's called. It's kind of like a, making a French knot. Only it's it's actually like again back to knitting. If you knit, it's just a cast on stitch. Looks like a oops. I know, kind of. It's like kind of like a half French knot, but you're kind of just casting on to the, your needle and as many as you want to make it long and then it curls. Like if you knit, it, that would happen too. Um, anyway, so I was going to cover him, but oh my goodness, that was, no, that was enough. That was way too much work. But that's the wool thread. And um, I've tried to do the drizzle stitch. I think that, again, that orange and yellow runner has some drizzle stitch on it in cotton thread. So if you want to, if, if you guys want to, if somebody can grab that, you can pass it around again, just so you can see the difference. Um, it's because it's very different. The, the cotton thread is a little stiffer and sometimes you want that look and sometimes you want it to look like a sheep. This, um, this one is all wool also. This has a wool background. Okay, yeah, sure. This is um, pumpkin pile is the name of that one. This one, um, this, okay, this is my pole dancing. And um, a woman in Rochester named that. I was vending at the Rochester show and I had just finished that and didn't have a name for it. So I had a contest and um, she named that pole dancing. Isn't that clever? <laughs> but this, the pole dancing quilt, the little nasturtium flowers, they're not stitched down, okay? I, they're only held down with French knots because when you're working with wool, um, the wool gets through the dyeing process or even if you just have some wool, you know, you bought an old skirt at Goodwill or something and you washed it, the washing, the heat, the soap, the drying all shrinks it, right? So when it gets shrunken, um, it gets Fold is the technical term. We all call it felting, but it's fully. Um, and that, that it shrinks. So then we can just cut out our pieces and we have raw edge and it's not gonna ravel. 
So I thought, oh, I just left them. They're kind of 3D. And um, was that in front of the owl long enough to see? Yeah, so that's that's always an option too, you know, not on a big bed quilt or anything, but on something <laughs> hanging on the wall. Yeah, Mary did this one also. So take a look, it, yeah, look close at the stitching. Um, yeah. No, she did the hand quilting. I don't do that. <laughs> Mary does that. Yeah, Mary. Mary has, I don't know, she has more patience than I do. So this is Pumpkin Party. This kind of went on. Um, I have to, I have to do my demo. Oh, this, okay, this show up, this one's my favorite. And it's, it's small, but, um, it, ha it has a lot going on. This is called Forest Flora, and I, I do have a few kits for it. Um, it, but I, it's delicate, but I will pass it because I want, I want you to, it's not that delicate. I mean, it's just fabric. It's got some beading on it though, and like it was, it was the first time I took the time to do beading, you know, and do all the stitching. Because most of the time, I, I don't have time. It, okay, this is during COVID. The stores are closed down, and I don't have to dye wool. <laughs> you know, it's kind of snarky, but sometimes she copies me. <laughs> she and I had a chat once. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, where was I? Oh, okay. So this, this little thing, um, I, I don't think I brought any with me, but the, the stems and I think there's embellishment inside the circles. Here, let me see. Let me point it out. Oh, okay. So around these circles right here and this stuff in, on the stems, that is called YLI Braid. Okay, YLI is the company that makes it. And it is a 12 strand braided cotton, kind of a ribbon, but it's, it's not really a ribbon. And I wish I didn't bring any. Um, it, you, can, you can couch with it flat. It's about three eighths of an inch wide. Okay, and so you can couch flat. You can, one time at a quilt show, oh, what's her name from Duluth, the machine quilter with the hair? Karen, 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 Karen. Yes, Karen, Karen borrowed some, and she did a demo on the long arm, stitching it down, the ribbon flat. It's pretty cool. But what I did was you can take, because there's 12, 12 strands of thread that are braided together. It's a very complicated braid. And if you just grab one of them, it'll ruche on itself. Mm. Yeah, it's really cool. I, I have, um, I think I have one, at least one kit that's a complete kit that has it in there. So if you could find it, Kim, then we could show them. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so it's, it's pretty cool stuff. So that was a lot of fun to make that um, that little project. All right, I'm going to plug in my water. So I, um, yeah, because those are just quilts. Right. Oh, uh, one other thing I want to talk about that is um, super important. This is probably the most important thing. Uh, we talked about cutting out our shapes with the freezer paper, but then when you put them onto your project, how do you keep it there? Because it's not fused down. So um, I like to use this tool. It's not available in all quilt shops. <laughs> but you can get it at Target. <laughs> so if you put pins in there, the pins just get caught on your thread, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just such a hassle. And uh, you could use a glue stick, but that's kind of gunky and 
another, you've got, it doesn't go away, right? It's always something there. So I just use a stapler and then the staples just come right out. Now, if you're gonna staple cotton applique down, it's gonna leave a hole in your fabric. What are you doing? Like fish? You do a temporary staple. Oh, well, it you could do that. But because you're stapling through the thickness of the wool, check it out on the back. They, they just come right out because they don't, oh. like if you staple paper, they're, oh. they're flat and they're hard to get out. But through the wool, because of that loft, they're not really tight. They're easy to remove. Yeah, <laughs> Jean's doing this. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> um, okay. Treading water. Treading water. Yes. Treading water. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm heating up some water. Um, oh, I started doing this too. So while the water is heating up, I'm I'm not going to be able to hold this microphone and do this. Here, you want me to hold it okay. while I do my demo? Okay. Do you don't have a stand? No. Okay. <laughs> so you have to be on TV too. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just, I wanted to show this. I started doing this project. I I bought this sweater at Goodwill. It's cashmere. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't care. This got some pins in it, so don't stick yourself. But it had some holes in. It. I washed it. It was like a big man sweater. So I washed it and shrunk it a little bit. Cashmere. It's from a goat, not a sheep. It doesn't shrink as much as wool does. But I shrunk it a little bit and I, I used the rest of the sleeves for something else. I don't remember. Um, but it had some holes. So I'm applicating on over my holes. So I just want to show you, it's just another thing you can do with, with wool applique. All right, good job. Here, I'll try and do, do both this. Oh, we didn't talk about needles, so we'll do that quick. Um, I, ha I have a couple different kinds. I like to use a chenille needle. If you are going to do your applique with just a regular sewing thread, you can use whatever you want. Uh, but you need to get a thicker thread through the eye of your needle and you need a relatively sharp point needle, right? So I like to use a chenille needle. I brought a couple sizes with me. A size 18 I use for the wool thread. Um, and this one is a 24, which is a little bit bigger if you're gonna do a cotton, like a pearl cotton, okay? All right, so this is, this is, um, oh, excellent. Good job, Kim. I'm gonna do this so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, if you're at home and you wanna dye some wool, I use um, a, a professional dye, right? But you don't wanna get all involved and buy all that stuff. But wool is an animal fiber, okay? So an animal fiber needs an acid added to it to dye it, to make it permanent, okay? And um, if you're dyeing a plant fiber, cotton or rayon, it doesn't need that. But wool and silk, both from an animal or cashmere, they need an acid. And that's a scary word, right? You think, <laughs> oh, acid, but vinegar, Vinegar is an acid, it works great, magic. Um, also, if you have some Kool-Aid laying around, a citric acid in Kool-Aid will work. So um, I didn't have any Kool-Aid, so we're gonna use food coloring. So it's just like Easter eggs, same thing, because eggs are just like an animal fiber, but they're, they're not really fiber, but you know what I mean? What percent um, acid is the vinegar? <laughs> I don't know. If it's below 5%, you can't pickle it. 5%. 5%. Okay, thank you. We're not pickling the wool. <laughs> We're not going to use that much vinegar. It just takes a little bit. Um, so if I dye a whole yard of wool, I use three tablespoons of vinegar, okay? So I have some little pieces here. I can't open this with these gloves on. 
Can you do everything? You can fold in my <laughs> and open my bag. <laughs> what happens if we go over our time? Nothing. Oh, no, not <laughs> it's a yeah. Well, this is kind of fun. So I, I had double bagged it. Because what? It's soaking and stuffing. It is. Um, I because I put it in this bag and it was dripping. So I put it in another bag and then I did this last night. So I would remember because if I did it this morning, I forget. And then I put it in this tray and it was full of water. So apparently both bags are dripping. Okay, so it does it smells like wet sheep, right? When my kids were still at home, oh they'd come home from school. Oh, are you dying wool again? It smells terrible in here. Where do you get your wool? Oh, you asked me that. I I get all my wool now from door mills in New Hampshire. Most of their wool is an American product, not all of it. Some of the textures that I over dye, we didn't even talk about that. I do solids and then I over dye patterned wools also. Um, and some of those patterned ones are woven in China. But um, most of what I do, most of the yards I dye are the solid colors and that's all American wool. Yay. So I like that. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I don't know where the sheep live. But... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Do you guys, you... What? Do you ever tear apart wool garments? Um, yes. Not for what I sell, you know, but sometimes for something to use at home. But the wool that I dye and sell is a different weave than most garments. So if you buy, you might be able to find a skirt that is just the same weight, but most other things, like a men's suit is too fine. That's, it's, it's such a fine um, thread that it won't really even felt. Um, and then a lot of, a lot of it is too heavy for wool applique. You might find something that you could use as a background though. But this is a, a wool flannel is what they call it. So it's more like the weight of a old school flannel shirt when they made wool flannel shirts, you know? <laughs> All right, where are we? Okay, I have... Um, some of the colors. I need some water. All right. I, can you guys see? Oh, no, you can't see. That's okay. How's it look out? Here. Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to put this in there. Uh, the wool is, it's just soaking in water. Yeah, it's just soaking in water. Wool naturally is full of lanolin because the sheep live outside and they are outside in the rain, right? And they would probably freeze to death if they didn't have lanolin in their hair. Uh, so the lanolin makes the wool water repellent. So if you just took some wool that had never been washed and you sprint put water droplets on there, it just sits there and rolls right off. So the wool does not want to absorb water. And to get it to take dye, it has to be completely saturated. So I soak it in water with a little bit of soap. Just a little bit of, doesn't even matter. It just needs a little bit of detergent to, to make the water wetter, right? <laughs> kind of, it just to help it absorb in. All right, so laundry soap or would you use dish soap? You can use dish soap. You can use shampoo. Okay. It really doesn't matter. All right, so I am just going to put in, I'm just going to guess about a cup of water. And it um, is, it's boy, it boiled. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the loons are here. <laughs> All right, put in a little yellow, a little. That's 
try enough color. It'll be really pastel. It'll be really scientific. I didn't want to have to measure and stuff. I mean, that's not fun, right? At home, okay, because I have to duplicate these colors, so you can order agave the same every time you order it. Um, you know, I, I'm a lot more precise. <laughs> I weigh my dye and yeah, it's all right. So this is just wet wool and we're gonna put it in um, our little dye solution. And and it's yeah, this I was just gonna say this is really light, but this would be a really good face, Santa Claus face. <laughs> Did you add the vinegar already? Hmm? Did you add the vinegar? No, I didn't. No. I should have. Okay, that's how you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put in some more dye. Oh, we'll just kind of. This is like cooking without a recipe. It yeah. is. Yeah. How fun is that? <laughs> All right, so now I just because of this little piece of wool, I only need like probably a teaspoon of vinegar. We'll just pour a little bit in there. This is, I mean, this is how you can do it. It doesn't have to be rocket science. It can be super easy if you just want to do a little bit at home. See? And you, you just make sure that vinegar gets all mixed in there. I I leave it um, because it's hot, right? Yeah. And then then I cook it. Okay, so at home it gets cooked also. I don't I put it in the I cook it on the stove, right? Or uh, but you don't want it to boil. And you don't want to burn it. But at home, you can just put it in the microwave. All right, so if I have a microwave here, I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit so we get it all colored. There's some. Could you use a bowl instead? Oh, sure. But whatever you use, um, well, because it's food coloring, you could do it in your Pyrex measuring cup. It's just food coloring. You can still cook with it. Yeah. That's, no, you wouldn't do that with the crosia. No, not with what I use. I, I have a separate kitchen and everything is separate. So then just stick this in the microwave for a couple minutes, right? Just long enough that um, you don't want it to boil because it could burn. If it's total, the water only comes up to about here. They don't, you don't need a lot. But if you had more water in there, there's a less chance of it burning. So that might be safer. <laughs> But I'm kind of a as use as little water as possible kind of girl. Okay, what so happens when it burns? Oh, that <laughs> smells really bad. <laughs> you know, it's burning hair. Really? I mean, it's bad. As bad as it smells just wet. I'm kind of immune to it. I after all the time. No. And now it just smells like vinegar. Yeah. Um, should we do another color? Sure. Tracy? Yeah. Did you put it in a yard of wool? What's your recipe? Or does the recipe really matter? Uh, the recipe only matters to me because I'm going to duplicate a color a thousand times. Okay. okay. So, no, it doesn't matter. Like, we just dripped color in there. Right. And you mean the recipe for the dye? Yeah. Well, no, that's exactly what. Azuma was asking. Oh, yeah. So you really don't have a recipe when you're doing it like this. You just no. no. Yeah. I mean, unless you wanted to duplicate it, right. then you would like have to measure and take notes, mm -hmm. and you know maybe you have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. To me, this is like, oh, okay. So this is pretty. Yeah, but if you're thinking you wanted to do some Halloween project and you wanted it more orange, mm -hmm. you just add more dye. Yeah. Just add more in there until you get the color you want. Okay. Why do you have to cook it? Uh, just to set it, just to make sure, because again, that wool does really not want to be colored and the cooking of it just helps to make it permanent. Is the color when it's wet the same when it dries? Or I couldn't color, hear you. What? Will the color yeah. lighten up after it dries? It will lighten up a little bit. Mm -hmm. What was the question? Will the color lighten when it's dry? Oh, 
Yeah, it will. It'll be a little bit lighter. Yeah. So yeah, so make it a little dark. Do you Just think we should add color. more? <laughs> you know, um, yeah, we could do that. Probably, like, do a, I don't know your microwave, so do a minute and a half. Yeah. All right, let's do a... We'll put in more color. Some blue, we'll do a little green. <coughs> oh, yes. Mm. Put in a little vinegar. <coughs> See, isn't this fun? Uh -huh. <laughs> Do I have the best job? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stick our wool in there. Oh. Oh, wow, that's yeah, good. is that good? Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Look at that. See, no, even if you left that, you'd have like a variegated piece, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, I could even um, just put a couple drops. On the top, we'll just get it a little wet so it moves around a little bit. And now that top part will be darker. That's like a little magic trick. <laughs> There. How much fun is that? Yeah. Another question from a zoomer. Yeah. Um, after you, if you do this kind of process, are these color fast? Will they bleed next to the vinegar and the cooking of it will make it color fast? Okay. And then after it comes out of the microwave and it cools because you don't want to burn yourself, <laughs> um, I wait for the wool to absorb all the dye. Okay, so now that piece that she took to the microwave, the water was already clear. So it had already, because the color wasn't very dark, um, that will finish its process faster, a lighter color. But this is a little darker. Let's see what we got. We still have some color in there. So I would microwave this and then I would let it sit until the color is all absorbed into the wool. And it might be it might be six hours, it might be an hour. I might wait till the next day. And then it goes in the washer, washer and dryer. And then the cooking of it helps uh, some of the shrinkage and the felting, but then the washer and dryer process just takes care of that. Um, and if you, it's hotter. But see, we have no color in our water. Wow, magic. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool, huh? Okay, I can put that in a baggie and then we can do another color. Wow. So would you use your water over again if it was clear in the end? Probably. I've never done that before. Oh, well, let's try. <laughs> it's hot. How long do you microwave it for? I did that for a minute and a half. Yeah, and that was funny. Yeah. You just don't, you warm enough, long enough so that it almost boils. Okay. Do you have a second washer dryer? I do. <laughs> I do. Did you wash it on hot ones and warm? I wash them warm. Okay. I wash it in warm. It doesn't really need hot. I think because of the it's already, it's already been in hot water enough. Yeah. Dry on some hot hot stuff if you want to help. No, them. no, I just dry it on a uh, warm. Really? I don't even think I dry it on warm. <laughs> yeah, like not cool, but my lowest, yeah, my lowest warm. <laughs> what is it? What do we call that? Medium. Medium. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't need to go through a hot dryer. I actually, I think um, sometimes if I have a lot, if I have a lot to do, I might have to do 20 yards in a day and my dryer doesn't keep up. So if it's nice out, I will dry it half dry in the dryer and then hang it outside. But the shrinkage thing is already taken. It's how, already much, done. how much does it shrink? 
Um, I, I lose about not quite 10%, mm. about four inches from, oh, it's more than 10%. Yeah, about 10%, close to four inches in a yard. So if you buy a yard of hand dyed wool, it's not 36 inches because it's sold by its pre-dyed size. Really? Um, the wool is 56 inches wide though, 56 inches wide. So I cut a yard and I cut, cut a little more than a yard. I cut like 37 inches, okay? so. I don't know why I do that, but then because it just shrinks so much. So by the time when you buy it, it's about 32 to 33 inches, not 36, but it's also it loses in its width. So we start at 56 to 58. And I yeah, and you lose a little bit there too. Um, what color? What are we doing? Purple. Purple. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Right. This is red. Don't forget to put more hot I had water. I took the lid off, so um, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure what color that was. Don't forget the hot water. Well, I already have some. Do you think that's hot? Is that enough water? I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, I need more water. water. I will put more vinegar in it because it's probably gone. And when you wash it, you put the churches in the Yes. And I use a, a detergent, not a not a soap. Um I, I, it doesn't have any additives in it, you know. Oh. I, I use a my hands are all like I have tainted. Yeah, um, I, I use Centrifold. Oh, okay. okay, but again, you could use a real, just a real gentle detergent, pure that doesn't have any chemicals or well, just the chemicals as the detergent. Vinegar? Vinegar. Did I do it? I do. No. Okay. Yeah. It's a good thing people are watching me. I'm going to squeeze out some of my water. Ooh, ready to see? Ooh, are we ready? Ready. Let's see what color it is. Oh, it's kind of gross. <laughs> it's purple. It looks brown. And it's more red. I hope I didn't accidentally put yellow in there. Oh, you didn't. We're watching. You didn't. We're watching the white dog. Quality controls over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's brown. like a that's that's okay. dirty wine. Red wine. But you need brown for things. You know, it's. I, when I say it's gross, or you know, maybe it's not the color you were thinking. <laughs> but in my in my oak leaf quilt. One of the colors in there was this color I accidentally made that I thought it was so ugly. But you know, you don't throw it away. And then later it was perfect for a leaf. Mm -hmm. It is brown. That's because probably that red food color is not, it's, it's, it'll be kind of purpley. It's kind of a burgundy. It'll, it would go with your top. <laughs> yeah. no. Did I put vinegar in there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Did you? Yeah. 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 I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so this, because this color is darker, this is going to need to be microwaved um, to, yeah. to finish. And it'll. Can you do that? And then we can see how much it absorbs of the color. Put them in the you can put them both in there. Like for two minutes, okay. both of them together. Oh, no, no, I thought I'm enjoying it. All right, so that's that's any questions about um, about that? Did it make sense? Looks like fun. It's kind of crazy, wasn't it? That, that looks like a lot of fun. It, it is looks a lot like of fun. fun. Yeah. I mean, Easter eggs are fun, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you just throw those away. Oh. Well, well, you well, sure, but then, I mean, you know what I mean. This, you can, you can dye wool. You can't do this. You can do this also with silk. 
right. like this, okay? But you can't do it with cotton or, you know. It has to be an animal fiber. It has to be an animal fiber. fiber. Right. Okay. So that was fun. That was. All right, are there any um, Zoom questions? <coughs> uh, no, I think we've got a long time. Oh, great. I have a question about the thread. How yeah. do you dye it variegated? Um, okay, so I have that. It's on the floor. Yeah, it's behind us. Here it is. Oh, thank you. All right, I have my little skein. And I will have three dye pots of my three colors. And I I soak, pre-soak this too, because it has to go through that same process. And I will dip a third of it into a color. I kind of squeeze it out. I gotta move it to the next section and dip that color in and do that three times till I have covered this the whole thing. <laughs> and then I microwave it. So I very gently <laughs> kind of wind it up and um, I put it in an old um, yogurt container <laughs> that I use and, and I microwave that. That's about a minute only because the thread will burn quickly. And that's that's all it needs. Then I, I let it dry and then I hand wash it. But you could you could also do that with food coloring. Or uh, Kool-Aid. With the Kool-Aid, you don't have to add the vinegar, but don't use the Kool-Aid with sugar in it. Sugar-free. <laughs> yeah, no, just use the stuff that you have to add sugar to, but you're not going to add any sugar. So now, if I, everybody's dying their own bowl at home, I don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> No. Okay. No. It's <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How much do you pay for the wool? How much do I pay for the wool? <laughs> um, uh, which is like a different size than cotton, you know, because the wool is so much wider. Uh, fat eighth is twelve dollars, um, and then you know, I think. A quarter yard is a quarter yards are twenty four. Yeah, it's it's not cheap, but that fat eighth is like fifteen by sixteen, fourteen by sixteen. It's it's a lot bigger than um, it's almost it's almost a, a cotton fat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And for those zoomers who are missing out on the opportunity to purchase, how can they get their wool? Um, my website, it, I just, it just changed in the last few months, but it is um, Tracy Trevesson Designs at Square.site. But if you, if you just Google me, it'll come up. Or if you go to my Facebook page, it, there's a yes. link there. At, at, no, design.square.site. But just Google me and it, I, I come right up. There's me. And there's some race car driver in England. We're the only yeah, tourist center. And, and alcohol too. And liquor. And alcohol. Oh, oh. Alcohol, spirits, but alcohol. The gin. Yeah. They're in Cornwall. That's my yeah. husband's people. Oh. Yeah. And his family say, came from. Say your last name again. It's Trevethan. It's not the Trevethan. That's okay. That's you know, I people. It, it's, it took me a while too. <laughs> and uh, I always say. Oh, he's sitting right there. <laughs> I always say that. I, I, I don't know if he's offended if you mispronounce it, but it doesn't really bother me. <laughs> We've been married um, 38 years. And I don't know, it's still kind of like it's his name. <laughs> Am I the only one that hasn't taken ownership of their married name? <laughs> See, I'm not the only one. Maybe it'll sink in after 40 years. Uh, is it 38? Am I right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess I'm done. Thank you. Thank you.
10, 15 minutes. Let's be back by 1130. Mm -hmm. There was a set of keys that were left on the table. Oh, some keys. And Tracy put out some wool samples to give us door prizes. So I think what we'll do is. They're and these. Oh, okay. you, want a, you want a door prize these? Sure. But I think what we'll do is if you'd already put your um, ticket in the door prizes already, as we go through the door prizes, we'll just dump them all into one big bucket and then we'll pull for Tracy's from that one. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. So we'll try and come back at 1130. We've got a few announcements, show and tell, of course, and, and we'll do door prizes. Oh, and whoever wins these, you can. You don't have to do a whole load in your wash for this little piece of wool. You can hand wash it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mute. Nope. You're hitting that button. Mute. It'll start flashing. Yeah. It does. It's still the same. It's a small amount. We'll just take it a minute to warm up. Hit the power button. Power button. Oh, that one. And it should go green, and then that makes it flash. Okay, okay, okay. I may have to start in the I could add the bowl for you. Yes, you could. <laughs> I mean, you might, you might not. Well, never died. She's bad. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to get one. My cousin's It's a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. That was so <laughs> 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 I don't like 
We didn't talk about scissors, but um, I like to use a serrated scissor to cut out wool. It's very helpful. I have a couple of pairs. These are only $5. If you
And so I, um, I thought that I should give it to them. And so that's, and then I put stars on the back because, you know, it used to be the North Stars before this one. So, so anyway, it's fun. And um, someone donated that banner fabric and I made it into a baby quilt. And so I think I got it a couple months ago, but it was, I thought it was very cute fabric. And so then I just added more pink. Very cute. Love it. A fabled name from Lionel Lakes. This is a Jan Kingwell, if you know her designer. She's from Australia. It's in a book called Quilt Recipes, I think. And it was actually paper pieced. So the points come out real nice. Yes. yes, it's called Wednesday Dale. And then this wall hanging is also in that book. I thought I would make a big quilt until I got 16 blocks done and thought, okay, that's enough. Hold it still. Hold it. Thank you. Thank you. And this this is from Bonnie Hunter, one of her books. And I only like doing scrap quilts, so this was fun to do. I read a call shot am like this is the Minnesota Quilters 2023 Mr. Quilt. And I made the smallest size, um, and I did change the center. Um, a lot of us did. <laughs> I don't want to say any more than that. But we didn't all like the center, so we made our own. There were, about how many? I think 117. 117, something like that. Yeah, um, um, entries? No. Entries? No. No. Oh, no. Well, geez. Oh, okay. well, geez. It was very. It was. It was awful. So I'm Regina Zadell from Hudson, Wisconsin, and this is my first one lot wonder. And it's not done, but it will be done for the Hudson um, quilt show the first week in November, which is the same day as this meeting, so I couldn't wait. And it's been ripped out a lot. The name of it is Unicorn in the Clouds. And it's also known as perfection is overrated. <laughs> so, um, and it will be donated to River Valley Riders afterwards for a silent auction. So, oh, wow. Hi, I'm Becky Lindgren, and I gave a little talk at Schoolhouse last month. And this is what it's what one of them looks like. So this is the, the interior, and that's going to be on the border. Um, I had to show it this this month because my granddaughter saw it, and it's her birthday next month, and it's got to be done. <laughs> and so this is all you're going to see. <laughs> oh, if you have any questions, I'm going to be sitting back there and answer. 
<laughs> okay, this is me. I finally get the Liz. I finally got it done. <laughs> Actually, it was done last month. I just didn't have it found. Jenny's like, oh, why didn't you bring it? Everybody else brings it. <laughs> but anyway, I, I finally got it found. And this is um, Anna Maria Horner's Black of the Month uh, of 22. And it's her Welcome Home Pepper. So it was fun, and it was another exercise in fussy cutting, which I decided I kind of like. And I think is that it? Oh, yes, another Anna Maria I had to stick with the fabric. <laughs> the fabric makes it go. Okay, so now door prizes. You want to make it look fast. So we're going to go ahead and draw for the door prizes. Does the owl follow me over here? No, no we're we're on this. Oh. <laughs> Let's do the, should we do the zoomers first? All right, do the zoomers. We'll do the zoomers first. How many do you want? How many? How many are on? Um, You've got the purchase. Oh, it's just twelve. So just one. So just one. Yeah. Brenda's going to run her random number generator. Much more scientific than me and my dice at home on Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> well, Linda winds us too, so. So, Linda. Yeah. All right, just a minute. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, we can go ahead and do the in the house door prizes first. How about we do that? All right. So, what I'm going to do is start with these, and as we pick, they're going to go into the big basket, and then we'll start drawing for Tracy's prizes. Um, so, our first one here is a fruit punch needle holder kit, and we chose door prizes that were wool this month because we had a wool designer here, but they aren't necessarily her design, so sorry about that. Okay. Where was this? <laughs> <laughs> and this is 768. Is 768 yes. still? Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm off the board. I can get <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll check with that one already. She won't win once. I don't know. <laughs> Next, we have a funky, that's what it says on it, funky little mug candle mat. Yeah. Yeah. Oops, you dropped one. I did? Uh oh, that's the one that must be. I guess not. Sure. <laughs> 800. And Crow River Mercantile, a potted willow cushion kit. <laughs> I have my other fingers. Seven eight seven. Oh, <laughs> do we have seven eight seven in the room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woohoo! Happy congratulations! Yeah, congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and this is cute. This is very appropriate for the season. It's a little bits of Joan turkey talk. Eight oh six. Woohoo! 
<laughs> and then this cute connecting threads pumpkin patch table runner is our last one. Seven eight five. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to throw all these together. I think there's some. I'm just going to throw them here because they were out in the video. Okay, so these are for Tracy's. Let's do one at a time. Okay. Seven, seven, zero. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then these cute Christmas colors. Seven, seven, four. And now what do we have? We have the beautiful orange. Actually, this would be perfect. Oh, seven seven five. Oh, oh my gosh. Gosh. This is awesome. <laughs> what was your other number? It's my sister. She left. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, we have this purple, which is purple. Mm -hmm. It's eggplant. You're right. It is eggplant. It turned out really quick. Yeah. Aubergine, yeah. oh, right? Yeah. Oh. Seven six six. Oh, come on. That's <laughs> okay. That's it's still warm. I know. All right. Look for that one. Mine. Okay. This is the last beautiful green turquoise seven six three. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody else is here. <laughs> Side of the room. <laughs> well, I, you might want to trade for the purple. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jude, do you want to trade for the eggplant? Hey, Jude, do you want to trade for the eggplant? Yeah, I love eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> That's the core of my kitchen this time. <laughs> 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 I can make it at home. So, our winner of the door prize from our Zoomers is Mary Nelson. And I oh, I'm here. here. Yay! Hi. What is your favorite quilt shop? Local quilt shop. Uh, it's the one in uh, oh, not uh, <laughs> up, <laughs> up north. Cottage quilt. Is that Cottage it? Quilts. Okay, we will get you a gift certificate and we'll buy more fabric. No, but four seasons. Four seasons. <laughs> okay, got it. Four seasons. Congrats, Mary. What did I win? <laughs> you won a gift certificate. Oh, fantastic. $25 gift certificate. That's what we're giving our Zoomers now because we don't have to pay shipping. It's just okay. the cost of regular. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> we have another slide. And we're done. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Tracy, for a wonderful presentation. And yeah, buy a mask on the way out. Yeah, buy a mask on your way out. Yes. Grab a quilt to buy. Yes. Stop or pick up a kit to put something together. Sign up for the show. Sign up for the show. Sign up for the show. Oh, so you have to go Yes. Yeah. Oh, you can make the 14 was our largest number. Yeah. It wasn't very many. And usually it's more like 30, but yeah. So, can we get a gift card? Yeah. So, wait a minute. Right. I know. It's like you almost want to get on there. <laughs> can I zoom from the back of the room? Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, 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 I need more fabric. Right. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I don't know if that's <laughs> 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 <laughs>